XPS can produce a lot of data. An example of a file that contains a lot of data is this one. It's a measurement from a polymer that has been repeated multiple times. And the objective is to observe any degradation that might be occurring to the polymer as we repeat measurements. One of the things that we might want to do is display the data so that we can identify some sort of evolution. Now, as it stands, we have each spectrum plotted with a different color. And the reason it's plotted in this particular way with these particular colors is because there's an option on the color property page of the tar display parameters dialog window that is ticked that says display spectrum using scale. That's the reason that we see the evolution of colors from one color to another. Now we can display how these colors are arranged with respect to spectra by displaying a key and the key is the color scale. When I press apply and display that on the left so I can see behind this dialog window, we now see the variation in colors that match the spectra. We can also add to a key the experimental variable. So if there's a numerical value that accompanies each spectrum, in this case, it's just the index of a measurement, that we can see that the 251 measurements went from zero to 250. So that represents a number that can be correlated with an, a color. And so we can look at the data and see that we start off with two peaks that were reasonably similar in size and relationship in terms of position. And with time, something happened and the evolution started that led one to diminish and the other to diminish a little bit, but something else to start growing to overtake what we had originally. So this is one perspective of a data set that is evolving. Now we have other options. And if we plot these as 3D plots, then we get another perspective and we might want to arrange this so that we can see more of what we saw in the other display. So this involves organizing the geometry, that is to say this back plane here and the front plane that we can adjust these to alter the perspective of the plot of these spectra. Now the parameters that I'm going to adjust as an example is the X shift. Now the front plane is defined by these three parameters and the back plane by these four parameters. Currently, the back plane is offset to the right and it goes from minus 100 to plus 100. So this is nearly full range in the X direction to the right. If I wanted to alter that, I could make that minus 80. And right now, the front plane is shifted all the way to the left because it's minus 100. Let's make that plus 100. And when I press apply, we get to see a little bit more of the data. Now let's turn off the key because that's not necessarily helpful in this case. And we can replace that by adding a numerical value that be, will be plotted in the y direction. So this is the experimental variable. And I've plotted this on the right hand side. So that's not the ideal one. Let's go for the left hand side. And now we get to see that, well, th the numerical values that represent these indices, they're also plotted using the colors that are used to, to display the spectra. There's a scale there, they slightly overlap. So let's just adjust the geometry a little bit more. Let's move it over by making it minus 70 instead of minus 80. And now I have my index plotted as I'd like it. Now the color that I've got plotted is based on what is on the color property page. It says automatic. So what it's done is it's chosen a color based on a, a white background. If it was a dark background, you'd get a different color. In fact, this is the dark tile here. It's quite a nice color scale anyway. So let's use that one to plot the data or alternatively what we can do is plot the data not as line drawing but as points 
let's make the line width for these points one and press apply. Now this is slightly slower in drawing, but what it does is it shows you where there's variation in the signal. There's a gap so you can see through the data and see where the variation is occurring and the color is reflecting the intensity. So we can see that there's one peak that is very intense and there are there's a peak over here that's, that's equal intensity at zero but diminishes quite significantly. So that's another perspective of the data. I could also turn off, for example, this back plane so I don't need to see that. I can draw 3D back plane off and we get this perspective once again where we've got only filling where we need to in order to make this display work. Now there's one further thing we can do. When we have data such as these, there's an option on the image processing window that allows us to convert spectra to images. So these selected spectra here, if I press this button, it'll say, do you want to use the selected Vamos blocks or the ones displayed? They happen to be the same, so it didn't matter in this case. But what I've now got is an image, and that image is giving me the same information. I can actually adjust the color scale so that it is similar to the way that previous plot was performed. That's to say a bicolor, and I can take off the automatic limit, scaling limits, and that will produce an image that is plotted in intensity with similar types of colors that you saw when the spectra were plotted. Now let's just add another display option. And this is add the axes major lines. And the result for an image is to add two scales that are the binding energy scales of the spectra that we use to construct this image. So now we get to see from above, as it were, the colors that give us an idea of the intensity as a function of the experimental variable.